two weeks ago as we all gathered around our computer screen in the company of this faith community, we spoke about the equinox. The story of Demeter and Persephone, an ancient Greek myth that spoke about the changing of seasons. A story about mother and daughter. A story about the time when spring didn't happen, the summer grew gray and the harvest failed. The world became shriveled and withered and nothing grew. We spoke about a time when we all must go into the ground to hide away, to struggle, and to sow our souls into the darkness in order to grow again. And we created a memory of that time together. How many people have plants blossoming in their little containers from that Sunday morning together when we planted seeds? I meant to bring mine in, but they are waterlogged right now. I have a bean plant that's about this tall and a kobacha squash that's a little bit shorter. And I have several spaghetti squash plants also coming along. All seeds sown two weeks ago as we gathered and looked at the traditions of witches and pagans around the world signaling the changing in the season and the stories that they talk about to make meaning in the world. Jesus also spoke of seeds, the importance of new life and possibility and the need to go dark. The parallel about the sower is retold by Unitarian Universalist minister, Reverend Gary Kowalski as such. Jesus spoke of a seed. Unless it falls to the earth and is buried, it remains just a seed, but by going down, down beneath the ground, it receives, it gives rise to new life and bears much fruit. Part of the magic is in the seed, which is alive, full of DNA and stored up nutrients that help it grow. But another part of the magic is in the soil, which is made of old leaves and twigs and little creatures that have composted and decayed to make the bed where the seed can lie quiet and take root. It takes both types of magic to make spring happen. The light and the warmth and the clarity of the sun and the cool, damp dimness down underneath the earth. It takes the wonder of life and it takes the wonder of death. And people are like that seed. Sometimes we have to lose ourselves to find ourselves. Sometimes we have to make an ending in order to find a new beginning. The wisdom of rising up again after a time of hardship or pain, after a fallow season or a wreckage is littered everywhere within the ancient histories of many different cultures and many modern day melodies, poems, and images. It is likely that the story of Jesus's resurrection and most definitely the timing of his death are borrowed wisdom from many of these stories, just as the traditions of Jesus's birth did. And while this borrowing of stories is neither new nor exclusive to Christianity, it is not the story of Jesus's death or the mystery of his resurrection that I hope to highlight today. But more, it is the fact that although all seem to be lost, that life for their new leader had ended and they seemed to go on anyways, that they seemed to go on anyway. It seems so apt a story for our current day and time of the world coronavirus, C-19, perhaps this last year has been our time in the soil, our time in the tomb, our time in the underworld. An attempt to gather ourselves, to determine what is best for us, a time to regenerate, regroup, gather ourselves before we rise again. We need to spend time in the dark, 
isolated and on our own before we can rise again over and overcome. After rising again, we are able to put into practice all of the lessons we learned. We are able to recognize that which is most important to us. We are able to live out the truth we have been learning. As I was doing research for this service and trying to figure out how to talk about the paradox of this day, the paradox of a faith community celebrating a resurrection, a sacrifice for skin, for sins and the divinity of a man, when none of these really fit with our theology of the unity of divine and the unending goodness of humanity. I decided to explore music as a way to allow for the queerness of this paradox. Because music speaks to me in a way where the lyrics need not be taken literally. And there is still power in the melody. I grew up with music in every aspect of my life. On the radio or CDs were always playing in the house growing up. We sang at our dinner table, our gratitude for food, while we were in the car traveling to and fro, walking to school and in the park behind my grandparents' house. We would rock out with the radio, murmur lullabies at nighttime. And we sang at church every weekend. Nowadays, I still sing all the time to my dog, Bryn, to Adam, to myself. Whether the radio or Spotify is playing in the background or not, this gets me through tough times and it gets me through great times. It helps me express joy and sadness, love and worry. So I chose to look for music that felt appropriate for this service trying to figure out how to come from it a different way, moving outside of the theology about Easter and towards the feeling of rising up. One of the songs that I found was called the Mar Mary Ellen Carter, written by Stan Rogers. This song is named about a ship called the Mary Ellen Carter. It sinks in a driving rainstorm three miles from land. And the song is about how the crew decides to raise the ship from the bottom of the sea. It speaks of the owners of the ship writing her off and the fortitude of the crew who believed it was worth the trouble to bring her back up. It speaks of the adversity of people who have lived through and and the strength that they can come, that can come from their arms, hearts, and brains. And it speaks of rising again, no matter what you've lost, be it a home, a love, a friend. Like the Mary Ellen Carter, rise again. There is strength in the idea that we have the capacity to rise again. Even when our ship has gone down, even when we have been to the underworld or lost a daughter to the underworld, even when our leader has died and left us. And there are songs that can get us there. Last week, Mary spoke of the song, How Could Anyone, being a personal anthem for her. Blue Boat Home is one of mine, alongside Rod Stewart's Have I Told You Lately. Songs that help us get through the hardest of times is not an uncommon notion. Miners sung as they went down into the mines for working. Sea shanties are sung by sailors out on the sea and firefighters in South Africa speak of singing while in the fire. In order to get ourselves through the hardest and loneliest of times we can sing. The still and small voice singing through storm and rain, sorrow and pain deep inside. 
there is no there is a power in our voice there is a power in our coming together to sing whether it is the thing that is getting us through our challenging times like the miners and the firefighters or helping us to celebrate and connect it deeply to our community around us there is a power that can help lift our souls that can help us move beyond the stories and into a deeper knowing, a deeper awareness of what is happening and what really matters. And this power helps us rise again when it seems that things are more than we can handle. Easter, a celebration of the death of Jesus, of his ascension to heaven, of his death to wipe clean the sins of humanity. It's not really a story that I can get behind. And just like so many of the other holidays in North America, it's much more commercialized than anything else. But when we examine the story of how Jesus lived his life with love and compassion, serving the people who were at the bottom of society, breaking bread, with the poor, the sick, and the forgotten. That's where I find the story that I can emulate. Healing the outcast, praying for the meek, and thumbing his nose at the power and authority of the time. Living out that story in my own way, that has become my understanding of Easter. Overcoming the hardships of my time, offering empathy and a listening ear to help serve those who don't fit elsewhere, to be a leader that shows a way different than those who are in power. It's not necessarily an easy task, but with the power of community and song, it definitely becomes more manageable. We rise again in the faces of our children. We rise again in the voices of our song. We rise again in the waves out on the ocean. And then we rise again. Like the words from our meditation this morning, the story of Easter tells us that death doesn't win love wins. Like the sapling that sprout among the ruins of the forest fire, like the phoenix who is born from its own ashes, like the crocus that pokes its head out from the snow, we too can rise again. Thank you.